YouTube stars, Luke here. Hope you sexy boys and girls are doing great, baby. Let's go. Woo! Continuing the complete Beatles journey, song by song, album by album, single by single, and we are completing, finishing off the 1964 album Beatles for Sale with the final three tracks of the record, starting with I Don't Want to Spoil the Party, written by John Lennon, credited to the Lennon-McCartney partnership. And it's Mr. John Lennon who also takes lead vocals. It was the B-side to Eight Days a Week, and it actually reached number 39 on the Hot 100 billboard as a B-side, which is just outstanding, isn't it? Let's see what it's all about. It's showtime. So I'll go I would hate my disappointment to show There's nothing for me here So I will disappear If she turns up while I'm gone Please let me know I've had a drink or two and I don't care There's no fun in what I do when she's not there I wonder what went wrong Waited far too long I think I'll take a walk And look for her Though tonight she's made me sad I still love her If I find her I'll be glad I still love her I don't want to spoil the party So I'll go I would hate my disappointment to show There's nothing for me here So I will disappear If she turns up while I'm gone Please let me know There. I wonder what went wrong I waited far too long But I think I'll take a walk and look for her My goodness, that is what you call a B-side, isn't it? As good as an A-side I can see why it charted, because it's absolutely brilliant. The harmonies are just to die for, aren't they? And the way that it's used on this song is just perfect. It just adds this heartbreaking sadness to this already very melancholic song in the terms of the, the lyrics and in terms of the vocals as well. But it just adds this, almost like this quavering verge of tears, trembling kind of feeling to it. It is just beautiful, but in such a heartbreaking way. Um, oh, they're just magic, aren't they, those harmonies? I love the guitar in this as well. We've actually got some almost like country licks, the way that it sounds. It's uh, it actually reminded me, I've only heard a few of their songs, but... And perhaps this is the influence that the birds took from. But the birds, in terms of their styling... Um, especially the guitar. I mean, it's so crystal clear on this, the way that he's playing, and it's just got these little inflections. Love the instrumental. It's, uh, George, my son, you are just a phenomenon, aren't you, on the guitar? And, um, the tambourine and the drums, the percussion on this song, really interesting, kind of interchanging, and it adds different feelings to the songs. And it's just little subtle things, but they make such a big impression on the song. So that when you combine 
all of these elements and we've got John and he's not singing in his, you know, his rock and roll screaming voice. Here, we've got this very reserved, this kind of, you know, saddened, melancholic John Lennon. And I think that's what the song's about. It's it, disappointed, isn't it, in your partner or someone that you love or someone that you're interested in because they've let you down. In this case, they've no-shown a party and it's just made you just not happy at all. And, I mean, the reality is that someone should not make you feel like this. If they are the right person for you, and if you are in the right frame of mind yourself, you know, your response to this situation should be, I'm gonna have the best time possible. I don't need anyone else to have a good time. I'm gonna have a great time at the party. I'm gonna go home. And I'm not gonna go home in a sorrow. I'm gonna go home feeling happy that I had a good time. My happiness does not rely on someone else. But yeah, interesting to see. And we've seen it, I guess, with I'm a Loser as well and other songs of this nature where it is this somber, more melancholic, more sorrowful. We now move to the penultimate track of Beatles for Sale, What You're Doing. It was written by Paul McCartney, who also takes the lead vocals on this. So we've had a John piece. We now have a Paul piece. So let's check it out. What you're doing I'm feeling blue and lonely Would it be too much to ask of you What you're doing to me You got me running And there's no fun in it Why should it be so much to ask of you What you're doing to me been waiting here for you, wondering what you're gonna do. Should you need a love that's true, it's me. Please stop your lying. You got me crying, girl. Why should it be so much to ask of you what you're doing? Well, what a penultimate track to finish an album on. I absolutely loved this. I mean, before I talked about the influence on the birds, this most certainly an influence on the birds, wasn't it? The guitar from George and this thing uses a 12 string and it just sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Beautiful. They have such good riffs, but it's the way that he plays that really stands out those little inflections that we get. And we get this kind of jangly sound here, don't I? And it's one of my favorite sounds from the guitar. There's something about guitar in that style around this period that really just, it just does something for me. It's absolutely brilliant. And I believe actually George Harrison was a huge influence uh, on the birds. And they really kind of tried to, to copy and use his style as their inspiration in their works. But, that opening 
from Ringo. We get this four bar drum intro. We get it at the end as well. It's almost like this kind of slightly false ending, isn't it? But what a brilliant introduction to the song. And uh, we then get, again, the vocals. We've got Paul singing this time. So much emotion in his voice. We get this gorgeous backing vocal, which just enhances the emotion further. And then we get these shouts coming in on certain words to add this, this frustration and really enhance the, the strength of the feeling that we get from the vocals even further. So, you know, two different effects used to brilliantly enhance the feeling of the song. Um, and then at the end, I'm pretty sure we get, we get some piano come in as well, don't we? It's kind of in the background a little bit. And then the bass comes in as well, and they kind of then come to the forefront after that drum outro. And again, it's this kind of... Um, you know, I like the way that we're almost not ending with the symmetry. We get the symmetry of the song, and then we add this little bit extra in that isn't quite, not that it's not quite right, because it sounds brilliant, but it's not the completely satisfying end of where you think it would end. That false ending, and I think that as well adds to the feeling of the song and what it's about lyrically, which I think it's, uh, because again, it's a more somber affair from the Beatles. It's got some gorgeous guitar and you get lost in it and everything else. But in terms of the actual sound and the lyrics, again, more on that somber side, like the previous song. And I think here it's about a relationship that is very much on the rocks, isn't it? There's lies, there's mistrust. You don't know where you stand and this frustration, this feeling, this unhappiness that is, you know, becoming more and more apparent in the person's mind very much reflected with those little things that the Beatles do with their music, as well as those vocals. So I think really this is just, I mean, this album is magnificent. The perfect blend. I talked about them being one of the best, perhaps the best ever at renditions, but also their original songs that are just album songs are just brilliant as well. And I love that they are just, well, they're just, Bloody great, aren't they? Let's conclude the album. We talked about renditions. We have another here. This one is Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby. It is the finale of their fifth UK album. And originally this was based on a 1936 song by Rex Griffin. Carl Perkins brought the song to widespread fame when he added in certain parts and changed a few things around, releasing his song in 1957. And it was George Harrison in particular who was a big fan of Mr. Perkins, and it's he who takes lead vocals. So we'll have John, Paul and George all taking a lead in this finale of the album. So let's check it out. It's showtime. Well, well took it's some honey from, from a tree. Dressed it up and they called it me Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby now Woke up last night, half past four Fifth women knocking on my door Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby now Last night, I did say late For the home, I had a 19 day Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby now
Went out last night, I didn't stay late For a home, had a 19 date Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby now Well, they took some honey from a tree Dressed it up and they called it me Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby now What an ending to what has been a thoroughly enjoyable album start to finish. I actually love the renditions the Beatles do. And you see the different ways here, George and his influence, more that rockabilly sound. I mean, my goodness, it's a sexy riff. It's cool, isn't it? And that's the word I would use to describe a Mr. George Harrison, actually. His vocals, he has that slight similarity to John Lennon, but he's not quite as, um, I don't know, there's a slight softness to him that I associate with more of a hardness with the way that John Lennon sings. He has this, just, oh, I really love George. Um, the guitar's great, we get the little walk-ups at times, we get this kind of slight start, start rockabilly style, bluesy kind of feeling, and in particular the thing I noticed was that echo delay on the vocal as well. It's uh, an effect I don't think I've heard used yet by the Beatles, not certainly not to this degree anyway. And uh, really interesting that they kind of threw that in here. But my goodness, it's all about George this one, wasn't it really? Just absolutely brilliant. Always great to hear him sing because um, I just love his voice. And maybe it's because so far it's been kind of sparsely heard in terms of a lead role but certainly the guitar playing on these three tracks you really seeing just the talents of mr harrison come to the fore aren't you uh we have the false ending again um here where we've got really ringo's drum playing i think we get the tambourine in here again as well him and the snare really going hand in hand at the moment on this album he's uh, i feel like they really are coming into their own, whether it's on renditions where you really see the influences that they had when they were growing up, or their original material, you're really starting to see them, I think, kind of really flourish. And actually the word I would use for this song, which I think is, um, it's about feeling like the bee's knees, isn't it? Everybody wants a piece of you. Everyone wants to be your baby. Endless line of women that want to be with you. And I guess at this point, Beatlemania just flying high, it very much was the case for the Beatles, wasn't it? And it must be a kind of, uh, an interesting time with its pros, with its cons, of course, but this kind of, uh, everybody just cannot get enough of you feeling is, uh, I guess maybe it's great for a time, but eventually, you know, you just want that little bit of, a uh, little bit of less of that. You know, just a kind of space to be able to breathe. And I think at this point, the Beatles, with their touring, with their albums and everything else, it has been non-stop. So, uh, but what an album. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Love the mix of renditions and originals. And they are, I think, the best cover band in the world and probably the best band in the world at this point, aren't they? Yeah, what a brilliant, happy, confident ending to the album, and that is exactly the words I would use to say how I think the sound of the Beatles is in terms of their actual musicianship at the moment. That is the, they're coming into their own, shall we say. And we we'll soon find out because first of all, I need to type a few loose ends. There was an EP, Long Tall Sally, that I have missed. Apologies, my ignorance of this. So we have to catch up on that. I think there's four songs for me to review there and then we move into 1965 we move on to help and uh an album that along i think after that we have a rubber soul we're coming into those albums that have gone down in history as some of the greatest of all time and most liked and most favored by beatles fans so i cannot wait to continue that journey let me know in the comments what you guys think of these three songs which is your favorite and uh which is your favourite Beatle at this point? And tell me, why is it George? Because it just is.
isn't it? Thanks very much for watching. I'm signing out, brother. Thank you.